This edition of Mac Voices is sponsored by Simple Contacts. Lenses you need, office visits you don't. For $20 off your first order, visit simplecontacts.com slash macvoices or use the code macvoices at checkout. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is a talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, this time around, we get to welcome back an old friend. Well, he's not that old, but it's been a while since he's been here, put it that way, um, to talk about um, a bit of a personal experience that he's had that relates to Apple technology that he uses. Mr. Chuck Latornos is back. Chuck, it's great to see you. Hey, thanks, Chuck. It's great to be here. And you can say it. I'm I'm pretty old. I'm, you know, I've, I've come to terms with that, so... I'd, Old friend is fine. I'd, I don't buy it. I don't buy it for a second. <laughs> I don't buy it for a second. Um, I, we're a little late in getting to this interview because, as you know, I've been doing some traveling, and I think you had a few things going on. But I did want to get past the opportunity to talk to you about a, a Macworld article that you wrote about some, um, shall we say, adventures with your health that you've had and how some of your Apple tech helped out with that. I think it's a really interesting, compelling story, and it's a good bit of a lesson for everyone to learn. Yeah, uh, and, and I'm glad that um, I'm still around to tell the story, and you know, you didn't have to read it about it from somebody else. Um, yeah, I mean, it really goes back to um, 2016, the the first time that I I wrote about how Apple technology helped me with a health crisis, and back then it was. Um, uh, the, the very short story is I developed blood clots and uh, I had them at work in my office. I wasn't sure what was happening. The people around me thought it might be a heart attack. I was thinking it was just stress for, you know, I was getting ready for a trip. Um, but I wound up going to the hospital and they discovered that I have a genetic um, uh, disorder, I guess you'd call it, um, that makes my blood clot a lot. It's called Leiden Factor 5 and it affects, I think, Five percent of the population once they hit the age of fifty, and uh, I was right around that that age. So my you know my timing was perfect. All the stars kind of aligned on that one. Um, <clears throat> but I I was laid up, um, and I was in the hospital for about a week. But the reason that I sought medical attention was that I had been wearing my Apple Watch, and it was telling me that my heart rate was was excessive. Um, and I, you know, was kind of skeptical about it, and I would just say, "Okay, I'm just going to calm down, and I'll, and I'll sit for a while." But my my heart rate stayed elevated, and it wound up being enough to convince me that there was actually something going wrong, that it wasn't just my imagination, and it was something that I should take care of and and look into. Um, so it, had I not done that, had my had I not been wearing my watch, I'm pretty convinced I would have ignored it long enough that the story may have had a different ending. Um, <clears throat> but suffice it to say, it was a it was a very happy ending, as as my editor said. Whew, you know, good. <laughs> um, so you know, I think that um, that experience helped me appreciate what the Apple Watch and um, Apple's commitment to health and healthcare and fitness in general could do for me. Um, so about two years later, uh, this past fall, in fact, um, I, I noticed some symptoms that were, were making me think that maybe I was having a, a high blood sugar issue. Um, my, both parents uh, were diabetic, uh, so I do have the, you know, the disposition for it. Um, I was, um, as I say in the article, there was more of me to love. <laughs> <laughs> um, than there had been for a while. So, you know, that's a contributing factor. So, um, <clears throat> as I said, although this time my Apple Watch didn't alert me to this condition, I was convinced that it could help me overcome it. So I used the fitness features of my watch, um, you know, the, the rings, the activity rings, the workout apps and all that to really monitor um, my, uh, my activity, my exercise. Uh, and then I used a couple uh, third-party apps to monitor my calories and my sugar intake and carbohydrate car, carbohydrate intake. Um, for me, the answer was to really drastically, almost completely eliminate sugar from my diet and drastically reduce the amount of carbohydrates that I was taking in. Uh, and my, my watch and my iPhone um, were big helps in that. Um, I'm not a terrifically organized person, so having that, um, that aspect of, of the tech 
there to help me, I think made a huge difference because I would get reminders, you know, it's time to stand, it's time to do this. Um, and I, you know, I, I started out slowly. Um, I stood up when my watch told me to stand and didn't do a whole lot more than that. Uh, and then eventually I would, you know, walk around when it told me to stand. Uh, and then I got the, you know, the right idea. Well, let's look at those rings and let's, you know, open up that open walk, uh, app in the, in the, uh, on the workout app. And let's see what it says and what, see what it can do for me. Uh, so I started taking laps around the perimeter of my building. Uh, and if the weather was bad, I would walk inside the building. I would walk up a flight of stairs and then around, you know, one floor and up another flight of stairs around that floor and do a couple circuits of the building. My goal was to, um, to make three miles a day of good brisk walking. Um, that helped a lot. It started giving me the energy uh, and the motivation. And, you know, I could see a couple pounds drop off. And as they say, nothing su succeeds like, like success. So um, that was even more motivating for me. So I changed the way I, what I ate. Um, in addition to reducing the sugar and the carbs, I, I used portion control um, and, and ate less. Imagine that. Um, people kept asking me, you know, what, what's the secret? How, how did you do it? And I said, you know, unfortunately there is no magic pill. It was eat less, move more. Um, and that's what did it. But the apps and the watch really helped me monitor that and more than monitor, motivate me and tell me it's time to do this. Um, you know, you're usually farther along in your in closing your rings by this time today. So let's get on it, that kind of stuff. Um, and as you know, the, the end of the story was that I dropped over 50 pounds, um, I was able to first reduce the amount of medication that I was taking to um, to address the diabetes, and I'm very hopeful that soon I'll be able to be off the medication um, completely. That I will have cured myself of this through through the fitness and and the diet that you know the Apple Tech helped me with. Wow, that's that's phenomenal. That's phenomenal. So a lot of questions here. Um, to go back to the first first health situation, that was well before Apple uh, did, was doing the health the, the heart study thing. So, right. is that something that your watch sort of automatically did just based on default settings, or did you turn anything on the watch, or did it just notice that your heart rate was above what it should be? No, I, I um, when I started feeling the the shortness of breath and I could feel the pounding in my chest, I would open up the uh, heart rate app and i took a look at that and i knew what about what my resting heart rate was um you know from the few times that i did do exercises before that um and, and it was and it was way higher than that so um it didn't automatically alert me but i was monitoring it i was opening up that app firing it up you know every half an hour every hour or whatever just to see where i stood um and then when i you know when i did sit down and I would go back to work and just sit at my desk for a while. I would check it to see if my heart rate dropped back to normal, and it didn't. It was still elevated. And then when I got back up, even just took a few steps, I would check it because I could start feeling that, you know, those feelings again. Um, and it was tremendously elevated. And you know, doing things that should not make your heart rate that elevated. Um, but you're right there. Now I think the Apple watch will alert you if it senses things that are abnormal or, you know, outside of a, of a good range. Um, this was before that. So I had to take the step to look at it myself, but what I saw was pretty clear. Yeah. Uh, that's because uh, I know I'm, I'm going to try to avoid us both getting lots of emails about the specifics of how it worked for you and, and what worked. Um, and that was, I guess that was what, uh, one or two versions of the watch OS ago. Um, probably. Yeah. At least, at least one, maybe two. I think it was, I want to say it was OS watch OS three, but I'm not completely sure. I'd have to go back and check. Yeah. Okay. So then moving forward, um, it sounds like you, you really used the, all the apps and the watch, the watch, obviously, you know, the things we all are familiar with that at that designated time of the hour stand up. Um, and, and I, I love the way you, at first you stood up, then you thought, okay, I'll walk around a little bit, you know, so you just sort of worked your way into it. But what other apps on the phone helped you measure the caloric intake and, and, uh, and, and measure your exercise and, and all of those things? What were some of the specific ones? Yeah, uh, the one that I use to monitor what I ate um, is called My Net Diary. 
um, which is a really good app. It, it has free versions and premium versions, and you get more features. and And they even have a, a one that's that's targeted specifically to diabetics. But I just use the the regular free um, free version of it. Um, it it's got a tremendous database of foods, so it makes it really easy to say, you know, I had oatmeal this morning, and it would say, well, how much oatmeal? And I, you know, it was a half a cup of oatmeal, um, and and I put a tablespoon of peanut butter in it too. And it knows automatically how, ma how many calories that is and even what the breakdown is. So how many carbs did that give me? Um, and it would track that stuff all through the day and give me a running tally. So, you know, here's how many calories you've taken in um, and here's how many more you can have today um, in order to to stay on that path for the goal that you set earlier today. And, I, you know, I had told that I wanted to lose 20 pounds or whatever over a certain amount of time. Um, and it would also tell me how many, more importantly for me, how many carbs had I had from all these things. So I didn't have to worry about reading the labels um, when, when I did this part of it. I just typed in what I ate. It will remember what you had, so it'll sort of auto-complete it for you if you have the same breakfast every day. Um, and, but like I said, the database is just enormous. So, you know, if you go out and, and have something at, um, you know, I don't know, Chili's or, or Applebee's or something, um, it knows their brands, you know, the things that are on their menu and, and can break it down for you that way. Um, so there's a lot of choices. And to me, that was really important because um, because it was easy to do, I was more likely to do it and I was more likely to stick with it. And as I stuck with it, it started building out this really neat picture for me. And it showed me, you know, how things were trending and, um, you know, it gave me this really holistic view of my diet. Um, the kind of stuff that you can't get if you, you know, forget to put down your lunch for three days. And, you know, if you get bored with it or if it gets too cumbersome, you're just going to drop it and then it doesn't do you any good at all. Simple Contacts is sponsoring this week's Mac Voices. And I think that makes them the perfect fit for so many of our shows discussing how to do things different and how to do things better. Simple Contacts makes ordering your contact lenses easy and then improves on that by being sure that you're getting the right thing. Their five-minute Simple Contacts vision test is simple to do and actually rather fun since you're using your computer or your iPhone to do it. You start by entering your prescription and then move on to the test itself. The step-by-step on-screen instructions make sure you don't make a mistake and you read the lines just like at the doctor's office, but your iPhone or Mac is the one listening to your responses. These tests were designed by doctors, and each test is reviewed by a licensed ophthalmologist to make sure all is as it should be. And you don't have to go to the doctor's office or pay for the office visit. The vision test costs only $20, and you can take it at home, at the office, anywhere your computer or phone is, and you have adequate space. Once the test is done, you select your contacts from the brands that you know and probably already use. I can't stress that enough. These aren't no-name, no-name-you've-ever-heard-of contacts, but name brands that you already are familiar with and trust. You save money on the contacts, the shipping is free, and you're on to other things. The Simple Contacts app has received over 4,500 five-star ratings in the App Store, and their support team is always ready to answer your text inquiries should you have any issues which you won't, but it's nice to know anyway. Now is the perfect time to try out Simple Contacts. You're on the go more than usual during the summer, so an extra set of contacts for your outdoor adventures will come in handy. You can get started right now simply by visiting simplecontacts.com slash macvoices, and you can save $20 off your first order with the code macvoices at checkout. I do want to remind you that Simple Contacts is not a replacement for your periodic full eye health exam. They will affirm and review your prescription, but they don't write completely new prescriptions or examine eye health, just so you know. That's simplecontacts.com slash macvoices, and use the code macvoices at checkout to get $20 off your first order. Give them a try. You may never buy contact lenses any other way again. Thanks to Simple Contacts for their support of Mac Voices. Yeah, we've talked, I don't even remember how far back we started talking about the quantified self was, I think, the tagline. And that seemed to be one of the biggest things is, okay, it's it's great if you can do this and it makes perfect sense, but it's got to be easy or you you get bored, you get busy, you know, something happens and it takes you out of the habit of doing it and then you just never get back in. 
And right. I'm, I'm especially intrigued by the fact that it does the autofill for you so that if I have my bowl of Cheerios every morning, it, it learns that and that's what I have to put in. And some days I put strawberries on and sometimes I put bananas on. But at the end of the day, that's what's there. Right, right. Yeah. And it's very modular like that. So you can build up what you had. You know, you can you can say I had Cheerios plus, you know, a handful of strawberries on it and, you know, some almonds or whatever. Um, and it'll tally all that stuff up for you together. Hmm. I, as an aside, peanut butter and oatmeal, Chuck? Oh, man, don't knock it till you tried it. That's really good. Okay. And a little, if, and for a treat, maybe a little banana in there, too. Yeah. I, I, shades of Elvis? Is that what I hear coming? <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm working on that. When you said that, it's like, okay, peanut butter, I've never heard of that one. Really? I've heard peanut mm. butter on toast, but I've never heard peanut butter on oatmeal. Yeah, I'd, I'd put peanut butter on pretty much anything. What, before all this, one of my um, my favorite lunches, and this goes back to when I was a teenager, uh, I found a hot dog truck that sold what they call Chiquita dogs, which is a hot dog with crunchy peanut butter and sliced banana on it. Okay. And that's some good eating. A hot dog with crunchy peanut butter and banana. Yes. <laughs> Chuck, I don't know how to tell you this, but I think your health problem started a ways back <laughs> for a whole different reasons than you think. Yeah, well, that, yeah uh, that, that could be. I haven't had one of those in a long time, I'll tell you. That's interesting. That's interesting. How about how about the 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 exercise apps? I mean, we've talked about the the caloric intake, but what what exercise apps other than just the the three rings? That was it for me. That that was plenty um, because there are so many options for the for workouts. What I did usually was an open walk or an open run, um, and it it differentiates between indoor or outdoor. So if it was raining and I had to use the treadmill, I would use the indoor open walk. Um, it does um, it doesn't have kayaking yet, which was was my other big exercise, uh, but it did have rowing. So I substituted rowing. I don't know if that's you know comparable or not. Um, but but those did it for me. That was enough because that would um, that would also count my active calories. It would tell me how far I went. And again, you know, to me, it was hitting that three miles of brisk walk or run walk a day. And as long as I was consistent with that, uh, and I, I saw results, and that gave me the motivation to keep doing it. And I just wanted to say one more thing about the notifications. Um, uh, even on the you know the stand notifications, I'd gotten really good at ignoring those. Um, it was really easy to do, and you know I would kind of just shrug it off, and I could tell what notification was coming in by the way it buzzed. Um, and I really viewed those as an annoyance for the longest time. You know they were just a pain, and I was always this close to just shutting it off. And I'm, I'm glad I never did. Um, but for me, it, it was a change in mindset because what I used to find annoying, I now found motivating. So when it told me, you know, you're usually further along on your, on closing your rings at this time of day, um, I, I could have just gotten, you know, ticked off at that. Uh, but because of the change in mindset, I was happy to see them. I was grateful to have the notifications and I would say, yeah, you're right. You know, let me get on that. And I, you know, would drop what I was doing. And even if I could only get maybe a 10 minute walk in there, at least it was something to move me forward. And I think that was the big thing. Um, you don't have to do everything at once. I didn't do any of this all at once. You know, it was all very, very gradual in very small incremental steps. Um, I didn't, you know, I didn't go on, a, you know, a protein shake diet or do fasting for three days or, you know, go on Atkins or South Beach or any of those things. Um, because for me, those things, kinds of things aren't sustainable. I didn't want to go on a diet. I wanted to change the way that I viewed food and dealt with food. Um, and being able to use these apps in that way um, made that possible. Because even if it was only a 10-minute walk, even if it was only, you know, I, I cut out a third of the carbs that I normally would have had, um, I could track that and it was still progress. And, it, and the more I succeeded the more I wanted to succeed, the more I could look at those trend lines on the health app or, or Nokia's health made app, which were two of the ones I used, you know, I could start seeing that, that line go down, right? Even if it was gradual and, and all of a sudden I was very invested in not seeing that line go back up again. You know, I didn't want that to happen. Um, so it, it helped keep me on the straight and narrow. 
I find this very motivating and, and very inspirational from, from a lot of standpoints. It doesn't sound like you did anything that required a major lifestyle change. Um, it just, it was a gradual lifestyle change. I, I love, I love the fact that you're not saying, well, you got to get up there and close all three rings, you know, every day and, and, you know, and then go, you know, jump in the the ring with Mike Tyson or something, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's something we all can do. And you're right. I know that there are times that I tend to ignore the stand, uh, notifications and I probably shouldn't. And, uh, I'm true confessions. I've probably gotten a little bit better than I should have at ignoring them. I don't ignore them completely, but there are times that, okay, it's just not convenient or I'm on the phone and I could stand up, but you know, I don't. So you're, you're making changes right here for me. Just, you know, some of those simple little changes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and for me, you know, there was no big investment either. I mean, I, I bought the Apple watch was, but I already had that. I, um, but I didn't pay for a gym membership. I didn't pay for, you know, special foods to be delivered to me every day. Um, I, you know, just, I did this all, um, you know, basically for nothing, just by being more attuned to what was going on. And the watch helped me with that. Um, being more aware of what I was putting into my body and I could read the labels. I got pretty good at reading labels and looking up, you know, where, how much, how many grams of sugar, how many grams of carbs, um, even before, you know, while I was doing my shopping, but once I was putting those, those food items into the app, then that would track that for me too. So it's just, um, you know, paying attention, um, being mentally committed to it, I think, and understanding that it's not going to happen tomorrow, um, that it is going to take a long time. It was, you know, six months before I really lost the weight that I wanted to. Um, and, and I didn't, there was no big celebration at the end because I don't view it as an end. You know, I've, I've changed the way that, that I'm going to interact with food and, and fitness now. Um, and you know, while I'm not actively trying to lose weight anymore, I'm still, you know, losing a little bit. Um, and I'm still monitoring to make sure that I don't, that I don't slide back up. And the Apple technology is still a big part of that. Um, it was, it's just now, this is how things are. This is just my routine now, you know? Um, and, and I think looking at it like that is, uh, makes it more viable for the long term. I, yeah, it's, it strikes me as, as very much. And again, because the, the changes you made were, were gradual, you know, to, as you said before, you didn't go on the South Beach diet or Atkins or whatever, and then go off of it. You know, you just made right. those changes gradually, easily. And that's that's the kind of change I think maybe we can all get behind a little bit because nobody wants to change their lifestyle overnight. No matter, I don't care what aspect of it, you just don't want to do it, and and it puts additional stress on you. And you know, the degree to which that is a good or bad thing could be debated. But you know, is, is the stress worth the benefits you see from those changes? But if you can do it gradually, that's that's phenomenal. What, right. Yeah. What what were, what were your doctor's reactions to any of this? Um, um, so when I first went, um, it, I was, I found out that I was diabetic because I was doing follow-ups for the blood clots. So it wasn't my, my, um, primary care physician who discovered the diabetes. So I was dealing with a couple different doctors. By the time I got to my primary care doctor, I, I pretty much knew that I had diabetes. Um, and his, his reaction, well, you know, you both your parents had it. You know, you're of a certain age. You you are you weigh what you weigh. Um, here's the medicine that you're going to have to take for it. And you know, he put me on the the medicine to help lower my blood sugar, and then he put me on um, cholesterol medicine and and blood pressure medicine to counteract what the sugar medicine was going to do to me. And and that was sort of an eye opener. You know, all right, now I'm really this is like my parents. You know, I'm going to have that little that long pill box that has each day of the week. And, um, and that put a little bit of a scare in me and I didn't want to do that. So I said, you know, no, I'm going to, I'm going to try to deal with this another way. I'll, I'll take all the medicine I have to for now, but, um, I'm going to see if I can, um, if, if I can solve it myself rather than through external means. And he, he was very supportive of that. He's, you know, that's, that's a great idea. That's really good. I don't know whether, um, whether he thought I'd be able to do it or not. Um, but he started off by saying, okay, but don't be a monk. And what he meant by that was, you know, don't, don't, 
don't be religious about it, I guess. You know, don't try to go cold turkey. Don't try to cut out every single bit of sugar and carbs in your diet. Um, because I think he knew that that those are the kind of approaches that you get tired of and that backfire after a while. And you can actually wind up worse than than before you started. Um, so he said, you know, if, if you're going to have mashed potatoes, have a th- uh, have, you know, a third less of what you would normally have. And, you know, I have to confess, I, I was probably a monk about it a little bit, you know, cause I, I wouldn't eat any mashed potatoes. Um, and, and I also learned to like things that I had never liked before. I, I enjoy broccoli now, you know, which will surprise anyone who's ever known me. <laughs> um, I've, I've tried, uh, riced cauliflower instead of mashed potatoes and found that yeah, they're not bad. They're okay. Um, Every once in a while, I'll have some nice fresh corn on the cob, especially this time of year, because you know they grow it down the road from me, and it's right. it's too delicious not to. Um, but you know, I'll have I'll have one ear of corn every week or or every two weeks instead of you know two ears of corn three times a week. You know, it's it's all it's all moderation, and it's all how you um, how you handle it. I'm I'm so glad that the story has a happy ending. Obviously. But I appreciate the the courage that it takes for you to come out and talk about some of this stuff and, and relate your experiences. The rest of us benefit from that. So thank you. Thank oh, you for, yeah. for, for, for me and for a lot of other people that may be uh, inspired by what you've been able to accomplish. Well, you know, that, that was the goal behind it. That's what I was really hoping. When I wrote the first story back in 2016, I got lots of really nice letters about, you know, um, you know, you inspired me to, to look after my own health. You, you know, you, you motivated me to go get this checked and, um, you know, thank you so much for it. And when I knew I was going to have to go through this latest, you know, health crisis, health issue, um, that was very much at the top of my mind. You know, can I help somebody with this? Can I inspire somebody again? And, you know, that kind of makes, makes doing it worthwhile. Um, and the other part is, you know, I, I led the article with this, that for a lot of reasons, I got busy with other things. That was the last article I had done for Macworld, um, up until now. So there were people who, weren't sure what happened to me <laughs> after that. And I, you know, I had a couple, um, I, I was kind of in, inactive on Twitter for a while too. So I, you know, I would have a couple DMs saying, uh, I hope everything's okay, but I just wanted to let you know that your story really helped me. And I figured at least I'm going to let people know that I'm still standing upright. Well, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> me too. So you're not, but you're not just standing upright. You're doing a lot of, a lot more writing now. You're doing a lot of other things. I want to make sure we know where people can find out what, what you're doing. So they know you are upright. Sure. Yeah. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I, I am trying to write more for Macworld. So Macworld.com. Um, I'm also uh, really excited to be writing for fast company. Um, I, I had never written for them before. So it's, um, it's very exciting to kind of learn a new venue and kind of get their style and, and the tone. Um, so fastcompany.com, you can, you can see me there. Um, I'm updating random access almost daily now. Uh, which is fun and which is which is something that I haven't done in quite a while. And uh, I noticed that um, Random Access has now been around for 22 years. Wow. Which, if you know, if that doesn't make you feel old, nothing will. Yeah. So congratulations. That's amazing. Yeah, I didn't you. realize thank that. I mean, I know it's kind of gone up and down because yeah. you've had other things going on. Right. But wow. Yeah, 20 years, as I say, 22 years on and off, mostly off, but, you know, it still counts. Um, and then uh, techversuswild.net um, is the site where I kind of talk about the, you know, how, how to use technology. We've, we've covered this a little bit, you know, how, to, how to, the best ways to use technology in the, in the outdoors. You know, it's not like the old days where um, if you brought a Game Boy or something, you know, or, or your phone and you were up, you know, the kids were texting their girlfriends all night when we went out scouting trips. Um, there are good reasons to bring tech out in the in the wild now, and we like to explore some of those. So that's also a lot of fun. That's great. So you're still doing pretty much everything. You're just doing maybe a little more of it, and you're doing it in a healthier fashion. That's right. I like yeah. it. I like yeah. it. So you're on Twitter as? Chuck Latornis. Okay. Uh, Facebook identity as well? Yeah, I don't put as much um, on public on Facebook. I, I use Facebook a little differently, but you can find me there. Um, you can also find Tech vs. Wild on Facebook. But um, the the best way to get me is probably Twitter, and it's Chuck Latornis, um, C-H-U-C-K-L-A-T-O-U-R, 
N O U S. Great. And one more time, because you haven't done it for me for a long time, random access. Two M's, two C's, two S's. Thank you. Chuck, <laughs> it's great to see you. Congratulations on 22 years. Congratulations on your health situation. Gee, just congratulations on everything. You're doing great. Thanks. I'm, I'm having a lot of fun. It's it's a good time. Good. Well, we'll get you back here a little more often and definitely back on the Mac Jury to, uh, to solve some of the world's problems. How about that? Perfect. That's a D. Good to see you, my friend. Take care. You too, Chuck. Bye. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. I hope you find Chuck's story as inspirational as, as I do. Um, he makes me a little sh ashamed of some things, some things I've let slide in my life. So now I'm going to get them back, back in, uh, in line, and I hope you will too. Until the next time, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Mac Voices Facebook group and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us at patreon.com slash macvoices and join these folks who help keep Mac Voices coming to you. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.